Hi students, welcome to the session here at Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. Today we are doing the paper solutions for the 29th January shift 2 of JE 2024. Let's get started with the questions. First one says, if the distance between the object and distance between the object and its uh, two times magnified virtual image produced by a curved mirror is 15 centimeter, then the focal length of the mirror is going to be what? So the object distance and the image distance total, the difference between them is 15. So if you do V plus U, image distance plus object distance, that is equal to 15. Or I can do V is equal to 15 minus of U. On the other side, it's said that it produces a two times magnified image. So we know V by U, the magnification V by U is equal to two times. Replace the V over here. 15 minus u divided by u is equal to 2. So we get 15 minus u is 2u. That gives you u is equal to 5 centimeter. That is your object distance. Now that you have the object distance and you know v should be equal to 2u, you can even get the image distance v is equal to 10 centimeter. Now finally you are looking for what is the focal length of the mirror going to be. So for the focal length of the mirror, we know this is a mirror. So we go 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. You know because it forms a virtual image. That is why V is going to be positive whereas U is going to be negative. You can put them in correspondingly. You can put them in correspondingly. So 1 by 10 minus of 1 by 5 because Object distance has to be negative. It has to be on the left side of the mirror, whereas the image is formed behind the mirror. It's a virtual image. That's equal to 1 by f. 10, 1 minus 2 is equal to 1 by f. So you get the focal length as minus 10 centimeter. So the correct option is option C, minus 10 centimeter. Next question says that two particles x and y have equal charges accelerated through the same potential difference. They enter normally into a region of a uniform magnetic field and describe circular paths of radii R1 and R2. They want the ratio of their masses. Now we know that when they are accelerated by the same potential energy, that means they have the same kinetic energy, which is equal to Q into V. They have the same kinetic energy. Now we write the relation for the radius traced out in a magnetic field as R R is equal to momentum mv divided by qb. That's just momentum divided by qb. Momentum can be written in terms of kinetic energy as root over of 2mk divided by q into b. Now for both of the particles, they have equal charge. So q is the same, magnetic field is the same and even their kinetic energies are the same because they are accelerated through the same potential difference. So over here, that tells you R is proportional to the root of mass. That's the only thing it depends on. So masses are proportional to R square. So if you want M1 by M2, that is R1 square divided by R2 square. So it is option D over here. R1 square by R2 square. Next question we have says that the temperature of a gas having 2 into 10 to the power 25 molecules per cubic meter and 1.38 atmospheres is how much? So over here, we can go by the ideal gas equation, PV is equal to NRT and write T is equal to PV by NR. Now, if you look at the question, they have given you molecules per unit volume. You don't know the volume. You don't know the number of moles. So you have to readjust this a little bit. We do this PV by the number of moles I write as the number of total number of molecules divided by the Avogadro's number and you have R over here. If I put the V down and readjust that very formula, I can write it as total number of uh, molecules by total volume into R by Na. Now total number of molecules by total volume is itself the number of molecules per unit volume, 2 into 10 to the power 25. And R by Na is what we call as the Boltzmann constant K. So now this has reduced quite a bit. Now we can put the pressure is 1.38 atmospheres. So 1.38 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. 
n by v is the number of molecules per unit volume given as 2 into 10 to the power 25 multiplied with r by n a is the Boltzmann constant 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 minus 23 cancel the 1.38s 10 to the power minus 23 cancel with 10 to the power 2 cancel over here with 10 to the power 3 so you have 1000 divided by 2 your answer is 500 Kelvin for this next question takes us to the truth table of a given circuit over here so just write the boolean form of it for over here you have a coming in and from here you have b coming in so what comes out is a b over here you have b coming in and from here because it passes through a not gate you have a bar coming in so what comes out is a a bar b when you pass them both through an or gate you get y is equal to a b plus a bar b if you allow, if we do a little boolean algebra here, I can take the b common, get a plus a bar. a plus a bar is always going to be equal to 1. So you would have b into 1, that is equal to b. So y will just give the output of b. Look at the truth table, well y is equal to b. So that is option c over here. y matching that of b. That's it. a plays no role in this at the end. Next question says, in an AC circuit, voltage and current are given by V is equal to 100 sine of 100 TV and I is 100 sine of 100 T plus pi by 3 milliampers. They're asking for the average power dissipated in the circle. So this is your V naught, this is your uh, I naught. We know the average power formula is half into V naught I naught into cos phi, the cos phi is the power factor with phi being the phase difference between these two. Since they both are sine functions, the phase difference is just pi by three. Put them in correspondingly, you would have half into 100 and 100, 100 into 100, and cos of phi, that is cos of pi by three, so cos of 60 degree is going to give you another factor of half. Goes with the 50, goes with a 50 and mind you this was given as a milliampere so I have to put a 10 to the power minus 3 here so that is 2500 into 10 to the power minus 3 your option is correct option is option b 2.5 watts next question says a stone of mass 900 gram is tied to a string and moved in a vertical circle of radius 1 meter making 10 revolutions per minute the tension in the string when the stone is at the lowest point is how much now, first and foremost, what does 10 revolutions per minute in terms uh, per minute mean in terms of the angular velocity? 10 revolutions per minute is technically equal to 10 into 2 pi, this many revolutions in one minute, that is in 60 seconds. So we take it out. So that is equal to pi by 3 radians per second. That is the angular velocity of turning. Why is this important? Because when you have the stone going around in that string, at its bottom point, the upward tension has to balance the weight mg and it also has to balance the m omega square r. It needs to balance both of them. So they are talking about that lowest point. So over there, t is equal to mg plus m omega square r so m is uh, given as 900 grams so i'll take the 0.9 out common g is given 9.8 i believe 9.8 into omega square omega square would be pi square by 9 so pi square by 9 uh, sorry this is a plus here my bad plus omega square would be pi square by 9 into the radius was provided to us as uh, 1 meter. So it's just into 1. Right? So I make it 0 0.9 into pi square was said to be, we have to consider pi square as 9.8. So then it is 9.8 over here. If I take the 9.8 common, take the 9.8 common, I will have 1 plus 1 by 9, which is 0 0.9 into 9.8 into 10 by 9 so this 10 takes out this one this 9 takes this out 
you have finally 9.8 Newton. So the answer is option D. The total tension is 9.8 Newton. Next question says in the given circuit, current in the resistance R3 is how much? So in this one, it's a very simple question because first and foremost, just find what is the equivalent resistance. You have a 4 ohm and a 4 ohm in series, which makes the equivalent of this entire setup as 2 ohms. Equal resistances in parallel is equal to half of the resistance. 2 ohms, there's a 2 ohm, 2 ohm and a 1 ohm in series. So the total equivalent is 5 ohms. Total equivalent is 5 ohms. The voltage is 10 volts. So the current flowing, the main current flowing, I, main current flowing is 10 divided by the 5, that is 2 amperes. Now that current flows through here, it splits up over here. You want the current through R3. You can see there are equal resistances. So the current will also split equally. So if 2 ampere current came, it will split equally to be 1 ampere and 1 ampere over here. So the current in that R3 is 1 ampere. Next question says, a particle is moving in a straight line. The variation of position x as a function of time is x is t cube minus 60 square plus 20t plus 15. The velocity of the body when its acceleration becomes zero is how much? So we have x, so we can find the velocity as just the differentiation of that. So we get 3t square minus 12t plus 20. And the acceleration would be differentiating. So it would be dv dt. To differentiate that, you get 60 minus 12. Now you're looking for the velocity when acceleration is zero. When is the acceleration zero? If you put the acceleration as zero, you will get t is equal to two seconds. 60 minus 12 is equal to zero. So t is two seconds. Put that value of t into your velocity equation and you will get velocity is equal to 3 into 2 square minus 12 into 2 plus 20. 3 into 2 square, 2 square is 4, 3 into 4 is 12 minus 12 into 2 is 24 plus you have a 20 over here. So that is uh, minus 12 plus 20, you will finally get the answer as 8 meters per second. That is the answer for this question. Next question says that in Young's double slit experiment, light from two identical sources are superimposing on a screen. Path difference between the two lights reaching at a point on the screen is 7 lambda by 4. The ratio of the intensity of the fringe at this point with respect to the maximum intensity is how much? So we will use the relation that intensity is related intensity at any point is related to the maximum intensity by this relation cos square phi by 2, where phi would refer to the phase difference at that point. So over here, the path difference is given 7 lambda by 4. So the phase difference phi would be 2 pi by lambda into that path difference that is 7 lambda by 4. Take the lambdas out, take one of these out. So phi is equal to 7 pi by 2. That is going to be the phase difference. Put that in here. You are technically looking for I by I m that is equal to cos square phi by 2 phi is 7 pi by 2. So you'll get 7 pi by 4. 7 pi by 4 can be written as cos of 2 pi minus pi by 4 whole square that is simply cos square pi by 4 cos square pi by 4. Now cos of pi by 4 is 1 by root 2, square that and you would eventually arrive at half. option D, 1 by 2. Next question says that two sources of light emit with a power of 200 watts. Ratio of the number of photons of a visible light emitted by each source having wavelengths 300 Newton meter and 500 Newton meter respectively is going to be what? So over here, we know that power is same means energy per unit time is same and that energy uh, that power is equal to or power into time generally is equal to number of photons into h into mu energy of each photon. So since everything else is going to stay the same and you can write mu over here, uh, mu over here as 
एन एच इन टू सी बाई लामडा सो सी एवरीथिंग इज कॉन्स्टेंट पी टी इज इक्वल टू एन एच सी बाई लामडा इट्स ओनली दैट पी इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल ओके सॉरी यू वॉन्ट दी एन राइट यू वॉन्ट दी एन माई बैट द पावर इज ऑल्सो द सेम सो दैट टेल्स यू दैट एन एच सी इज इक्वल टू पी टी इन टू लैमडा सो एन इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू लैमडा बिकॉज एवरीथिंग एल्स इज द सेम सो इफ द रेशियो ऑफ द वेवलेंस इज थ्री हंड्रेड टू फाइव हंड्रेड द रेशियो ऑफ द नंबर ऑफ फोटॉन्स इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी इन दैट एग्जैक्ट थिंग सो द आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी थ्री इज टू फाइव थ्री हंड्रेड इज टू फाइव हंड्रेड सो थ्री इज टू फाइव Next question says a small liquid drop radius capital R divided into twenty seven identical drops. If the surface tension is T, then the work done in the process would be what? So the work done will come from the change in the surface energy of this entire setup. So over here, the bigger radius capital R is divided into twenty seven identical identical drops. So we know that small R is going to be capital R divided by n to the power one by three. This is the standard relation. If it breaks up into this many drops, so we will have small r is equal to capital R by twenty seven cube root of twenty seven is just three, so we can keep this as small r. Now the work done is equal to change in the surface energy, that is equal to T into the change in the area, change in the area from when it was a bigger drop to when it was this, they became the smaller drops. So over here T into What is the area of the smaller drops? There are twenty-seven such drops. Twenty-seven such drops, each with a total surface area of four pi small r square. And the original surface area available was just four pi capital R square with just the bigger drop. So if I put it here, I will get t into four pi. Twenty-seven into the small r is equal to capital R by three, so that is r square by nine minus the four uh, pi I've taken common already, r square over here. So you can see it is three r square minus r square, so you'll get two r square multiplied with the four pi t. You will finally arrive at eight pi r square into t. That is the answer. Next question says a bob of a pendulum was released from a horizontal position. Length of the pendulum is ten meter. If it dissipates ten percent of its energy against air resistance, then the speed with which the bob arrives at the lowest point is. So the bob is originally over here. From here, it comes down to over here. The height that it decreases by the change in height is this ten meters here. So you can tell whatever is the change in potential energy will be equal to the change in kinetic energy, but ten percent is used up by air resistance. So only ninety percent of that potential energy is available to the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is just ninety percent of the change in potential energy. Take one of them out. Take the masses out. So V, you need that V. V is equal to root over of two into nine by ten would be point nine. G is ten. And the height is also given to us as ten over here. So I believe we can take a few things out. Remove this with one of the tens here. That is eighteen into ten. So v is root over of one eighty. Root one eighty is six root five because inside it can be written as thirty six into five. One eighty is thirty six into five. Let's move to our next question. It says a physical quantity q is found to depend on quantities a, b, c by the relation. Q is a to the power four b cube by c square. The percentage error in a, b, and c are three percent, four percent, and five percent respectively. The percentage error in Q is going to be how much? So it's pretty straightforward. You can see the dependence of Q, and it's a multiplicative divis uh, divisive part. So it's just going to be the addition of the percentage errors. So the percentage error in Q, four times percentage error of a plus three times percentage error of b. Plus two times the percentage error of C. So four into A has three percent, plus three into four percent, plus two into five percent. That's twelve plus twelve 
plus 10 that's 24 plus 10 your answer is 34 percent for this question moving on to the next one it says a plane electromagnetic wave of frequency 35 megahertz travels in free space along the x direction at a particular point in space and time e is 9.6 volt per meter value of the magnetic field at this point is going to be what so over here you can find out the magnitude here b is equal to e by c so purely based on that you can get the magnitude point of view 9.6 divided by 3 into 10 to the power 8 which will give you 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 8 that is the magnetic field and the magnetic field is going to be see the wave itself is going in the x direction electric field is in j direction so the magnetic field has to be in the z direction it has to be with a k cap component so the only possible case is this because the other one is i cap direction that can't be possible wave is going in that direction magnetic field has to be perpendicular to the wave propagation next question says a bob of mass m is suspended by a light string of length l it is imparted a minimum horizontal velocity at the lowest point such that it just completed half circle reaching the topmost position ratio of kinetic energy is how much so this is a very common question that what is the minimum speed over here so that it reaches the top we know at the top this vh has to be equal to root over of g into l this is the standard case vertical circle and at the bottom for this to happen where it is just reaching there where the value is root gl here it would be root 5 gl so you want kinetic energy at the bottom to the kinetic energy at the top by K KT, uh, KB is half M VA square by half M VB square. Take the half M's out. So you have VA square by VB square that is 5 GL by just GL. Take this out. Your answer is 5 is to 1. Next question says that you ha we have been given two statements. Most of the mass of the atom and all its positive charge concentrated in a tiny nucleus and the electrons revolve around it. It is known as the Rutherford's model. This is a correct statement. Of course, it's the Rutherford's model. Second statement says that an atom is a spherical cloud of positive charges with electrons embedded in it is a special case. This is an incorrect statement because this is not Rutherford's model. This is the plum pudding model. So that means statement one is true, but statement two is false. It is option A. Next question here says that n moles of a polyatomic gas with degrees of freedom 6 must be mixed with 2 moles of a monoatomic gas so that the mixture behaves as a diatomic gas. The value of n is what? So we know the, uh, spe the specific heat at constant volume or pressure whatever you do for a mixture of gases is given by the formula that Cv is equal to n1 Cv1 plus n2 Cv2 by n1 plus n2. So you want the final behavior to be like a diatomic gas which has a CV value of 5 by 2 R. N1, the first you want how many moles, so that is capital N. If it has 6 degrees of freedom, CV is equal to F by 2 R. So based on that 6 by 2, so for the first gas, this polyatomic gas, it is 3 R. Plus N2 is 2, 2 moles of the monoatomic gas are mixed. And Cv for a monoatomic gas is 3 by 2 R. Divided by, you have 2 plus N. Number of, sum of the number of moles, N and 2. So first and foremost, take the R's out. Take the 2 out here as well. So we are left with 5 by 2 is equal to 3, uh, 3 into 3 N plus 3. Divided by 2 plus N. So just cross multiply things out over here we have 10 plus 5n is equal to 6n plus 6. So that just means n is equal to 4. The answer is option A, n is equal to 4. Next question says that a planet takes 200 days to complete one revolution around the sun. If the distance of the planet from the sun is reduced to one fourth of the original distance, then how many days will it take to complete one revolution? We can use Kepler's third law here that T square is proportional to R cube or T is proportional to R to the power 
3 by 2. So you can see if you are making the distance, if you are making the radius 1 fourth, so that means it's equal to r1 by r2 to the power 3 by 2. You are making it 1 fourth, so that is uh, 1 fourth of 3 by 2 right so you will obviously get your you are looking for this uh, t1 here t1 is equal to t2 t2 was given as 200 days into 1 by 4 to the power 3 by 2 is equal to 1 by 8 because the square 1 by 2 will make it uh, root over of 4 which is 2 and then a cube on top of it so 1 by 8 take it out you get a 25 over here so it is option b 25 next question says an electric field is given by 6 i cap plus 5 j cap plus 3 k cap the electric flux through a surface area 30 i cap meter square lying in the y z plane is how much so you have the electric through the area vector you have the electric field vector we know the flux we know the flux is simply e vector dot a vector just to the dot product of this and this since it has no j cap k caps, it's only the i caps that will multiply. So you can directly multiply them over here to get 6 into 30. That is 180. So the answer is option A, 180. Next one says a wire of length L radius R is clamped at one end. If its other end is pulled by a force F, its length increases by small l. If the radius of the wire and the applied force both are reduced to half of their original values, keeping the original length constant, then the increase in length is going to become what? So normally you know the Young's modulus formula is F by A into small l by capital L. So small l you want that is F into capital L divided by A into Y. Now what you're doing here is that the radius of the wire applied force and the radius of the wire both are reduced to half. Which means for your new elongation you have F by 2 and the area since the radius is also reduced to half and we know the area is proportional to r square so when you reduce r by half when you reduce r by half uh, 1 by 2 times area reduces 1 fourth so it's going to become a by 4 here into the y this cancels out so you get over here with a 2 so that is equal to 2 times of the l so the length increases it becomes 2 times option d Next, we have a numerical answer type question here. It says in a single slit diffraction pattern, a light of wavelength 6000 6, Armstrong is used. The distance between the first and the third minima in the diffraction pattern is found to be 3 millimeters when the screen is placed 50 centimeters away from the slits. The width of the slit is 10 to the power is uh, something alpha into 10 to the power minus 4. You want that alpha value. How do you do it? The position of a maxima uh, position of a minima for diffraction is equal to m the ordered number into lambda capital D divided by small a, a being the slit width. It is said so in this case the first and the third minima so x1 is going to be lambda d by a whereas the third minima x3 is going to be 3 lambda d by a. Now it is said the difference distance between them is 3 millimeters. Distance between them is 3 millimeters. So x3 minus x1 is equal to 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. So over here if you subtract them you will get 2 lambda d by a. That is 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. a is equal to then 2 into lambda is provided to us as 6000 Armstrong so 6000 or rather uh, let's directly keep it in the 10 to the powers 6 into 10 to the power minus 7 d the distance how far away it is kept is 50 centimeter so 50 into or rather uh, 5 into 10 to the power minus 1 meters and you have this 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 coming down coming down over here this goes away with the 2 and uh, over here you have make it 10 to the power minus uh, 4 
here 10 to the power minus 4 so we get uh, 2 into 2 4 into 5 that is 20 into 10 to the power minus so uh, take 2 5 and this with this so 10 into 10 to the power minus 1 so you'll just be left with 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 which means the alpha that you want is equal to 2 that is the answer for this they ask for the slit width next question here says that a simple harmonic oscillator has an amplitude a time period 6 pi seconds assuming that the oscillation starts from the mean position time required for it to travel from x equal to a to x equal to 3 root 3 by 2 will be pi by x second where x is how much so because it's an oscillation that starts from the mean position has an amplitude a and time period 6 pi we can first get what omega is going to be omega is 2 pi by the time period 2 pi by 6 pi that is equal to 1 by 3 so i can write my initial equation initial equation of uh, let's keep it in terms of y y is let's make it alpha y uh, or then we can write it as x here we can write it as x here we can write the equation as a sine of omega t omega for us is uh, 1 by 3 t by 3 and that's it that we don't need any phase angle over there because it starts from the mean position this is my x position when does it reach x equal to a when x is equal to a then a is equal to a sine of t by 3 so technically sine of t by 3 is equal to 1 which means t by 3 should be equal to pi by 2 or let's call it t1 for now t1 is equal to 3 pi by 2 we'll keep it at that it is 3 pi by 2 what about the case when it reaches root 3 by 2 so it is going from this to this from this so it's at the extreme position it reaches after a time 3 pi by 2 now it's coming back now it's coming back you want that time so over there uh, when x is equal to root 3a by 2 then over there we were going to have uh, root 3a by 2 is equal to a sine of t by 3 cancel it out so you would think that t by 3 i will just write as 60 degree but you can actually go that but the more logical way to think about is is that it should be 120 degree t by 3 should be 2 pi by 3 it should be 120 degree the reasoning mean it has to be after that 90 degree mark 90 degrees at that extreme point from there you are coming back so the angle should be greater even though it will not affect your final answer but still just to be a bit more accurate with our concepts t2 is equal to 2 pi now you just want how long it takes in between those times so you are looking for t2 minus t1 that is 2 pi minus 3 pi by 2 so you would get it as pi by 2 so over here alpha is equal to 2 that is the answer the next question says that a particle is moving in a circle of radius 50 centimeter in such a way that at any instant the normal and the tangential components of its acceleration are equal if its speed is t is equal to 0 at, at t equal to 0 is 4 meters per second then the time taken to complete the first revolution is going to be 1 by alpha 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi seconds where alpha is how much so over here we start off with the tangential acceleration equal to the centripetal acceleration which means the tangential acceleration it means that the tangential acceleration is just going to be v square by the r r here is given as 50 centimeter which is 0.5 so we can write it as 2v square that is the acceleration now beyond this this acceleration is what is responsible for changing the speed so we write this a as dv dt that is equal to 2v square and we can take it to an integral form to get integration of dv by v square is equal to integration of 2dt if we integrate this we get 
माइनस वन बाई वी इज इक्वल टू टू टी प्लस सी टू टी प्लस सी ओवर हियर Now in the question it is said that at t equal to zero the velocity is four meters per second. So we use that to get our constant of integration. That at t equal to zero we have uh, this over here t zero. So v is four meters per second. So c comes out to be minus one by four. It just comes out to be minus one by four. So we put that in here. To get uh, one by v is equal to minus two t plus one by four, multiplying both sides by the negative sign. So from this, we manipulate this a bit more, and we will get v is equal to four divided by one minus eight t. This is your velocity based on a certain time t. We want to see how long it takes to complete the full first revolution. So we integrate it once more by breaking it up into ds dt. That is equal to four divided by one minus eight t. So integration ds is equal to four into integration dt by one minus eight t. ds the total distance it travels in the first revolution is just two pi r, two pi r, and that is equal to four into ln of one minus eight t. Divided by minus eight, and the limits go from zero to t. So we can put it as r value is going to be point five. So two into point five will just leave behind a pi over here. Pi is equal to minus this is two one by two into ln of one minus eight t divided by if you put t equal to zero, you'll get ln of one. So we just Drag it about bit out over here. So we have minus two pi or uh, e to the power minus two pi. I send the two over here to make it minus two pi, and then e to the power minus two pi is one minus eight t divided by one. So we don't need to worry about that. So we are looking for t. T is equal to one, uh, one by eight into one minus e to the power minus two pi. So our alpha value that we were looking for. Is eight. That is the answer. Next question for us says that in the given figure, the charge stored in the six microfarad capacitor when points A and B are joined by a connecting wire in micro coulomb. So if you connect A and B, your current flow would be along this path. Nothing will enter the capacitors because it's in the steady state. So the net resistance of this entire path is six ohm plus three ohm. That is nine ohms. The voltage difference is nine volts. So you know a current of One ampere flows through here, nine volt by nine ohms. Now, according to that, if this point is I can is at nine volts, this point is also at nine volts, and because the current of one ampere passes through a resistance six ohms, you know the voltage here would drop by six volts. So the voltage here would be three volts because it drops by six volts. So over here also it is three volts. So the Potential difference across the six microfarad capacitor is nine minus three, so delta V is six volts over there. You want what is the charge over there? So Q is equal to C V. So C is six microfarad, six microfarad into the six over here. That will make it thirty-six micro coulomb. That is the answer. The charge is thirty-six. The answer is thirty-six. Next question for us says that two metallic wires P and Q have the same volume and are made up of the same material. If their area of cross sections are in the ratio four is to one, force is V one, for and force F one is applied to P, an extension of delta L is produced. The force which is required to produce the same extension in the other one Q that has a diff different area. Now observe that they have said that they are the same volume and made of the same material. So Young's modulus is the same and the volume is the same. We know F F is equal to <coughs> y a small l divided by capital L. That is how force is related to the elongation and everything. Now over here you would see that the area ratio is given, but if you just consider the area as variable, then that's a mistake because the length is never said to be equal. 
The extension is the same, same extension. So small L is the same, but capital L is not the same. The volume has been said is the same. So what we do is that we multiply an area in the numerator and denominator. That would make this part as the volume and you would be able to write the equation as y small l by v into a square. Now in the cases given here, the only thing variable is a. So I can just write that the force is proportional to a square. So clearly on the basis of that, if I see that the area is in the ratio of 4 is to 1, then the forces will be in the ratio of square of that. So it is going to be 16 square of 4 square, square of 4 over here. Next question for us takes us again to a current electricity thing. It says in the given circuit, current flowing through the resistance is 20 ohm is 0.3 amperes. What is while the ammeter reads 0 0.9 amperes? The value of this R1 is how much? So through this 20 ampere, you get a 0 0.3 ampere, uh, 20 ohm, you get a 0 0.3 ampere. So what is the potential difference across its ends? It is 0.3 into 20, that is 6 volts. That is 6 volts over here. That same potential difference is there across this resistor and this resistor as well because they are in series. So 6 volt potential difference across a 15 ohm resistor across a fixed 15 ohm resistor is going to give you a current of 0.4 amperes just v divided by r now you know this takes 0.3 amperes this takes 0.4 amperes and what you measure here is 0.9 amperes so that means 0.3 plus 0.4 is 0.7 amperes here there is 0.9 that tells you that this is going to carry 0.2 amperes because only then would you have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3, 0 0.4 combining and giving, the, giving you the 0 0.9 amperes here. So the 0 0.2 amperes is the current flowing. Resistance is R1, but the potential drop across that is still going to stay 6 volts. So potential drop is still 6 volts across this. So R1 is just V divided by I, 6 divided by 0 0.2. Doubt. So R1 is equal to 30 ohms. So it is answer is 30. That's the answer for this question. Next one says a body of mass 5 kg moving with a uniform speed of 3 root 2 in the xy plane along the line y is equal to x plus 4. What is the angular momentum of the particle about the origin? So if I think about the y versus x axis, the y equal to x by 4 would be a line that goes like this. It should have a positive slope as you can see. And it would have equal intercepts. This would be 4 units. This would also be 4 units. If I draw a perpendicular from here on, I know because both sides are equal, this angle is 45, this angle is also 45. Which means, since I drew a perpendicular on it, each of these angles are also going to be 45. So what is this perpendicular distance D? What is that perpendicular distance D? That D is going to be this 4 cos of 45. 4 cos of 45 degree. That is the perpendicular distance of the line of motion from the point where you are finding the angular momentum. So that is 4 by root 2 which is 2 root 2. That is the perpendicular distance. Now we know angular momentum. L is simply mv into d. Once I have found the perpendicular distance, I don't have to worry about sine theta, cos theta or any of those. I can directly go for mvr. So mass is given 5 kg. Velocity is given as 3 root 2. Multiplied with the d is given as 2 root 2. So we get 5 into 3 into... Uh, into 4, so 12 into 5, you will get it as 60. You'll get it as 60 over here, yes. mv into d, that is the answer. Let's move ahead, next one, next question. It says a charge of 4 microcoulomb is moving with a velocity of 4 into 10 to the power 6 meters per second along the positive y-axis under a magnetic field of strength 2k, uh, 2k cap tesla. The force acting on the charge is how much? So it's pretty simple. Firstly, you can see that it's going in the positive x-axis, whereas the magnetic field is in the z-axis. So it's perpendicular. 
So you can directly apply the first relation as QVB. You don't have to worry about the sine theta because as you can see the theta value is going to be 90 degree anyway. So it's all about putting the values in. The charge is given as 4 microcoulomb, 4 into 10 to the power minus 6. Multiplied with the velocity is 4 into 10 to the power 6. Multiplied with the magnetic field which is 2. Take these out, 4 into 4 is 16 into 2, that is 32. Answer is 32 over here. Next up, we have this, it says a horizontal straight wire, 5 meter long, extending from east to west, falling freely at right angles to the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field, is 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 Weber per meter square. Instantaneous value of EMF induced in the wire when its velocity is 10 meters per second is some alpha into 10 to the power minus 3. So as you can see, it's an east-west direction falling straight down. So over here, the north-south magnetic fields are perpendicular to it. Its motion is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we can directly apply formula for the motional EMF as BLV because we don't have to worry about angles anymore. Magnetic field is given as uh, 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 4. The length is 5 meters and the speed with which it falls is 10 meters per second. So over here, take it out, make it a 10 to the power minus 3. 0.6 into 5 will give you 3. 3 into 10 to the power minus 3. So our alpha is equal to 3. That is the answer for this one. Next question says, hydrogen atom is bombarded with electrons accelerating through a potential difference of V, which causes excitation of the hydrogen atoms. If the experiment is being performed at t equal to 0 Kelvin, minimum potential difference needed to observe any Balmer series line in the emission spectra will be alpha by 10, where alpha is how much? So here, even though they are talking about Balmer series, we never use n equal to 2. The reason is we are doing this at 0 Kelvin. So everything is at the ground state. You want to give an energy so that when it comes back down, when it again uh, <coughs> de-excites and comes down, it releases a Balmer series. So Balmer series is only emitted when it comes to n equal to 2, when it drops down to n equal to 2. And it can drop down to n equal to 2. The minimum case is that the electron has to be excited to at least n equal to 3. Because only then it can drop down to n equal to 2. So the energy that I give should be enough to take it from ground state to n equal to 3, not n equal to 2. Because if it reaches n equal to 3, then while coming down, it will emit a Balmer line. So I know that the, that the energy I need to give E is equal to 13.6 into 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 3 square. Because you're taking it to the third orbit. So you get this as, in electron volts, so you get this as 13.6 into 1 minus 1 by 9, that will be an 8 by 9 over here. 8 by 9 over here, right? 8 by 9 electron volts. And this energy comes from the taking an electron and accelerating through a potential difference V. So we know that energy a into V is equal to 13.6 into 8 by 9 electron volts. This electron volts at unit cancels out this. So V is just 13.6 into 8 by 9. This will come out if you calculate, you will get it as roughly 12.1. You have to represent it as alpha by 10. So you write it as 121 by 10 and your alpha then is equal to 121. That is the answer for this. So that was the last question and that finishes our paper discussion for 29th January shift 2. You'd be also getting the other paper discussions. So do go through them. These BYQs are all important for you. That's it from this session. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Catch you all again in the next one.